I'm here to speak about success. We're more often than not measured by success in things that we do. What if we were able to, with near certainty, be able to measure how successful we're going to be in any business that you want to start, in any relationship, and in anything that you want to do in life? Moreover, what if we were able to induce behavioral changes by high credence, by simply giving you more information? What's success? It's very simple, actually. Individual capacities, rewards, and time. When you're aware about types of individual capacities you have, what type of a reward that you're seeking, time to success is very short. When you're unsure about the composition of your capacities, of your rewards, when you're uncertain, time to success is elongates. So why is that? Why? It's, it's pretty basic. And the fundamental element of this is we need to look into biology of a human. What drives a human being? And there are fundamental principles ingrained in our survival that actually force an action. From early in the civilization, in a primitive form, food, water, shelter, these are those fundamental resources that without a, without a person will not survive. So the survival, this particular disposition, forces an action that is widely predictable. Through evolution, as we went from primitive to modern civilization, we acquired three different types of capacities. We've acquired intellectual capacity, we've acquired financial capacity, and we've acquired network capacity. And what does this mean? When it comes to intellectual capacity, essentially it's the general knowledge base that we have. It's the ability to assess, it's ability to plan, it's ability to execute. What about financial capacity? It's all of the assets that you have. Investment, savings, you name it. Network capacity is pretty tricky because most of the time we ignore it. And it sounds very simple, yet it's very complex. One of the key ingredients of network capacity is reciprocal relationships. And the key is reciprocal relationships. And also formal systems association. And that means your interaction. For instance, your citizenship with a country is part of your network capacity. The fact that you are attending YS YSMU is also part of your intellectual, uh, your network capacity. Which one of these capacities is most important? Intellectual capacity, financial capacity, network capacity. 
we tend to think it's the intellectual capacity or I've learned in this place financial capacity. What about network capacity? Let's look at it the following way. If humans did not belong to families or groups, early human survival would have been questionable because there were a lot larger predators out there. That kinship is a natural ordeal for humanity. Families determine our fates more so than we would like to. Are you more talented than Picasso's and Mozart or what we were just showing in this beautiful artwork here? It really depends actually. If you're if you're born when you're first born, regardless of how incredible the DNA you have, how big your brain is, even if you have a trillion dollars stashed under your name someplace, if you don't have a parent or a guardian to give you the food, the water, the shelter, no way for you to survive. Really doesn't matter. So that initial support system comes from network capacity. And if your caretakers don't have the means for you to have paintbrushes to try to become the next Picasso, the instrument for you to be able to play, to practice, to become the next Mozart, if they don't have the networking capacity themselves for others to see your talents and through them for them to appreciate your talents and take you forward it's very challenging for any individual to break through so your fate is really in your family's hands early on if no one knows that you exist it really doesn't matter how much of a talent you have. There is no doubt that there were people as brilliant, if not far more brilliant, in 107 billion people that lived on the planet to date, but we've never heard of them. And largely because they didn't have the proper network capacity. But network capacity by itself is not a solution. You still need the intellectual capacity followed by financial capacity for you to be able to grow, to expand, to advance. But even these three things, they're still not enough for you to really reach the levels that you need to reach. A famous author, Malcolm Gladwell, has anyone read the book Outliers? Oh, good, very good. So he looks at, he looks at, essentially he says that you need to be in the right place, right time, plus you would need to have 10,000 hours of practice. That's roughly 10 years, if you're wondering what that means. And he's actually right about this. There needs to be some kind of a practicum for you to reach certain levels of understanding. Uh, two other professors, 
Professor Davison and Arbuckle from Stanford University, they found that the key for entrepreneurial success, for instance, is the initial failure. And it speaks well to Gladwell's theory in that you need those 10,000 hours for you to, during those 10,000 hours, you're going to have a bunch of faulty starts, failures, but then eventually you're going to create that knowledge base that is required for you to move forward. Are we genetically privileged or are those successful people genetically privileged? They're not even superhuman. It's actually very simple what they do. There is the fourth capacity it speaks about the individual's intent, what you will do and why you will do that. We call it the core capacity. Essentially what this means is the following. It's a function, a simple function of my abilities, if I'm starting something, over required abilities of whatever it is that you're going to do, actual rewards that will come out from that exercise and my expected rewards over time. Simplify is a set of abilities, a set of rewards over time. Time is important. Time is important because everything can change. Think of a scenario when you have an activity that's going to happen tomorrow and it's going to produce thousand dollars for you and you're excited and you know for a fact that it's going to produce thousand dollars for you and then fortunately or unfortunately tonight you're going to hit a 100 million dollar lottery and your interest about this activity that is tomorrow four thousand dollars diminishes significantly if does not completely disappear. You're no longer interested, at least not interested the same ways. Let me give you another example. Bakery, because I like to eat, and in Armenia you find all these incredible uh, bakeries where actually the food tastes like food. So I wanted to speak about bakery. Think of a moment when you want to start a bakery and you have the intellectual capacity, you have a unique recipe and you have the funds for you to develop this bakery. You also have the location where all of these people will come and purchase your baked goods. And here's the key. The rewards from the business and your expected rewards match. And let me show you what I mean by this. In order for this business to be successful, regardless who's doing this, does not matter who's doing this, there needs to be a need for this goods that you're going to bake. And let's say it's going to generate $10,000 in net monthly income doesn't matter again who's doing this there is a need for this business the second part of it is you have the abilities to build that bakery produce the goods and sell them you've met the second criteria the third criteria you're completely satisfied with this because you yourself wanted to make $10,000 in net income. This is recipe for success. What if we change only one thing here? We change from you expecting $10,000 a month in net income to 100,000 net monthly income. This 
one adjustment changes everything. Because bullets one and two will make that business, will make that business, will make that business successful, but not you. The business will be successful. You will not be. Which means, if there is an alignment of your core capacity with that of whatever that business will produce, that alignment leads to success. If there is no alignment, the chances of success diminishes and diminishes significantly. Another example to simplify it even further. Everyone is familiar with the light bulb? This thing that right in my eye? That one, and it makes very hot. Something needs to be done about these things. When we survey whether people can change the light bulb, and it takes one thing to do. You need to unscrew, and then you need to screw. Screw. Intellectual capacity. Apes will not be able to do it. Intellectual ca capacity. Necessary for the success of light bulb change. Now, the question is the following. When we survey, most, almost 100% of ordinary adults know how to unscrew and screw, which is pretty significant. Yet we don't see all these adults rushing out on the streets changing light bulbs. And you say, what if we put a reward behind it? What if the reward is a whole penny? How many of you would want to go and unscrew? And you know how to do it. Everyone knows how to unscrew, right? Good. Very intelligent community. One penny an hour for you to screw on no takers. How about a, a dollar an hour? Hundred? Woohoo, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Ten thousand dollars an hour. Hundred thousand dollars an hour. This will solve all of your issues, the only thing you need to do for an hour is if you're not doing it, please get out of this room right now. Now the question is whether someone like Bill Gates will do it. There by some estimates, he makes $130 per second. It literally does not worth for him to bend over to pick up a $100 bill because it takes more than a second. He makes nearly $470,000 an hour. This is silly will make your life. This is silly for him. He may still do it if he may gain in intellectual capacity, which he can over time translate into bigger financial capacity, and then maybe he'll yawn as he walks by and steps on a million dollar treasury bill. So you see when your core capacity is aligned or misaligned, the action is either expected or not. Most will rush for 100,000, but some still, because reward is not aligned. <sighs> Why do we care about rewards? humans, we need to eat, we need to drink, 
hopefully more more times water than anything else and we need shelter when we don't have any of these things and all of these things are scarce it's very important not to confuse having access to something to that scarce versus not having that item or having that item in abundance for instance oxygen is abundant no one needs to buy it no one needs to stand in line for it at least in the current world god knows what we will do to this world but in the current form it's the only abundant resource that we require everything else is actually in a scarce form when something is in scarce form it brings agony and chaos into your life and I mean think of you've had you've had moments when you're thirsty and you need that water you've had moments when you're starving you need to eat or you've been overly cold or you've been overly hot but you're still fine because you have access to this so well, many people don't actually but at least people in this room hopefully many of you had access to that so it's it's this condition and it's a very important element it's this disposition that drives a lot of our actions because what we're trying to do in the modern in the modern world through these capacities that I've displayed we're trying to create redundancies to get out go away from agony and chaos and go into abundance into harmony and order what is the point what is the level of that difference it's actually still unknown some years ago Bill Gates funded there was a study I think he contributed about 25 million dollars to this study or so and I don't think that study produced any results but they wanted to see where do you peak how much resources do you need to get where you come to a peak and you say I'm satisfied I've created all the redundancies that I need I'm never going to worry about agony and chaos I'll always be and you know I'm afraid the study did not produce results because as long as those things are integral for our survival and they're in scarcity it doesn't matter how much you make you constantly need to create this redundancies because all of these resources could be taken away theft natural disasters government interference ecological evolution many things could happen so I would invite I would say let's avoid the noise that exists out there that somehow those people that are successful they're genetically privileged individuals there is no magic to success it's the right calculus once you do the right calculus things fall into their places it's the only thing you need to worry about now, what we can do moving forward actually is to try to quantify this in advance so before we embark on anything that we want to do we actually know whether we're going to be successful or not and this is kind of an interesting proposition and we're working on this they're not there but I want to say in about 10 years or 15 years when we have big data on every single individual when through big data we know before you even say anything we know your intellectual capacities we know for your financial capacities we know your network capacities we know the equilibrium and equi equilibrated form which is going to bring you to success we know your reward exchanges we know all of this information we can predict your action and sometimes evil even interfere and I want to speak to you about crime and prison through this for able to measure where the threshold is where committing a crime is cheaper less expensive 
than if you were to get intellectual capacity or financial capacity. We can interfere and do preventive mechanisms. For instance, your criminal activity can put you behind bars for 10 years, for instance. Well, there is a lot of costs associated with that. Investigation, prosecution, court fees, prison fees. The fact that for 10 years, a productive force was locked in some kind of a cell, all of these are opportunity costs. What if this opportunity cost we measure is $100,000? And we know this in advance, and we see that you're reaching that threshold, and we know it's going to cost us $100,000 if you commit a crime. And we decide that we're going to spend $25,000 on your education, on getting you a job, so you move away from criminal activities and do some things with socially accepted norms. Sounds insane? Improbable today, but not impossible for tomorrow. It's something that could be done and would likely get done. So, takeaways. What we want to take away from here is several things. There's a calculus that goes into all of this. And it's our individual capacities with the rewards that we're seeking. If we know this, if we understand it, if we're applying this calculus, the road to success is easy. The excitement of life is there. The opportunities that you will create for yourself, the opportunities that you will create for loved ones, for other stakeholders are cr clear. When you're moving away from here, I would say, perhaps you can ask yourself a single question. What is my purpose? And you start digging deep to really define what your purpose is. What is it that you're trying to do? Do you want to be the smartest? Do you want to be the richest? Do you want to be the most connected? Understanding this will open a path for you that could not be opened by anyone else. It will give you a freedom like nothing else. You will no longer procrastinate. You will no longer stop doing things. You no longer will enviously look at how others excel. The only things that will concern you, how do I share the abundance that I create? Thank you very much.